Aha. Hello, and welcome to this video about how to control your sound when you're playing on a distorted guitar, because that requires you to use some amount of muting, but then you also have to not mute when you want those notes to, to ring out. But in this video, let's look at how to control your sound. And you know, we all know about palm muting, right? The second you start, you know, introducing distortion to your sound, you have an instrument that's, that's pretty, you know, uh, uncontrollable almost. Um, people use noise gates and all kind of stuff, but the second you start playing it, you know, everything rings out, everything is out of control. So you start introducing palm muting, because you have to, right? Uh, you put your PC bone, which is to be found uh, where your your hand ends and becomes your your arm, basically. You have a little bone there that you can put where the low E string meets the bridge, and when you have it there, you can easily put the the fatty palm of your, or the fatty part of your hand there, just across the string, so you achieve this, this sound. There's a lot of uh, free videos on YouTube on that, palm muting. But then how do you go from palm muting to not palm muting? Because we have to do that when we play riffs. We have to go... We have to have that palm mute, and then we have to... Right? Then we have to stop palm muting when we... What notes to ring out here? And how do you achieve that kind of precision? Because if you try to palm, you, you know that it's a very, you have to really put your hand in exactly the right spot, not to palm you too much or palm you too little, right? So if we can design an exercise, because you can, you can use the, the, the way that most people learn this and just by playing riffs. You basically play riffs over and over and over again, and then gradually you learn to make them sound better and better. But you can also take out the challenge, you know, each individual challenge of playing a riff, and then attacking it like specifically with focus, and then just, you know, knock it out of the park just right away, instead of, you know, developing or practicing multiple stuff at one time, which is what we do when we play riffs. We play some song, we play, you know, an ACDC riff, and basically what we're practicing is, is both playing the power chords, you know, get, making it happen in the left hand, and we're trying to, you know, both pick and palm mute and do all kinds of things and, you know, pinch harmonics, everything at once, which is the most ineffective way of practicing anything, is to take on multiple challenges at once, because the brain doesn't know what to focus on, right? It doesn't know, where am I, what am I learning here? Am I learning to do this or that or the third thing? And that makes it incredibly inefficient when it comes to learning. But if you can feed it just one challenge, one challenge at a time, and then really, you know, put in the repetitions on that one thing, you can absolutely, you know, uh, defeat that challenge in no time. And then you can go on to the next one and the next one until you have all the different little skills of playing a riff really in a really cool way uh, down, and then you can play it. And this reduces the amount of learning time you have to put in with, you know, ten you know, just one tenth of what you normally use. So let's, uh, let's just f focus on a practice method that you can use to really um, get this palm muting and not palm muting down. Um, what you do is that, and this can seem a little bit boring, but let's just look at it first, right? And then we can talk about it afterwards. What you do is basically take one string, and then you palm mute the low E string, right? And you experiment. You might take like that, 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 that's the palm mutes, and then open up. Right? And the reason why you play that many strokes on both palm muting and not palm muting is so you can uh, adjust when you palm mute, right? Um, because you you, so you you hit the you try to hit the string right on right away and do the right palm muting on the first stroke, but you can't because you have to do a little bit of adjusting. It's like when singers they practice singing. Most singers develop this little technique of approaching the note from below. So if you want to hit ba, right, we go ha 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 because that gives us kind of an inlet, so we can and it sounds like we know what we're doing. The same thing goes here that we put our hand 
on the bridge, and then we have to adjust a little bit to find the right sound using our ear. So we just put on some distortion. And then... And the, the effect, the, the purpose of not paw muting, because that's really easy, right? You remove your hand, but the purpose of it is so that you have to go back to paw mute again. That's the whole purpose, because it's so easy just removing your hand. But we have to shift back and forth in order for us to learn the moment of palm muting, just bam, bam, right? We just want to be able to go, instead of having to adjust, we just want to be able to go. So we can go. You know, palm muting not, palm muting not, and go directly into that. So the, the way you develop this exercise is that you play fewer and fewer strokes of each thing. So you go palm mute once, and then, you know, twice perhaps in the beginning, or three times. Right? Until you can just go back and forth. And don't be discouraged if you forget what you've learned. If you have this under control, you got the E string totally under control, you can do... Right? And go right back to the palm mute uh, perf perfectly. Then the next day, it's, you kind of have to do it again. But that's just how it is, right? You learn and forget, learn and forget, until you cannot forget anymore. It's just in your body. But the next part of the exercise is to do the next string, right? Because that's different. You hold your hand in a slightly different way. Just try to palm mute the low E string versus the high E string. It's a very different experience because it's placed in two different, and the hand and the everything, right? So you do the next string, but don't do the E, the low E, and then the high E. Go gradually up. So you take the, play a power chord of A. Do exactly the same exercise. One, two, three, four, five, three, five, five, five. And then only three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? And, and make time for adjusting. Uh, and then only two. And then perhaps only one. Right? And then you move on to the G string. And you don't have to play, at this point, you don't have to play power chords anymore. You can, but, but you can just play uh, just a single string. So you really get the, the feeling of it. Oh, we are actually at the D string now, so. Right, and the same thing with the G string. And the higher you get, the more minute the little adjustments are that you have to. But if you do this over time, just five, 10 minutes each day, this exercise going back and forth, each string muting it, uh, and start really focusing on the two lower strings because those are the one you really need when you play riffs. If you do this over and over again, five, 10 minutes each day, gradually it's going to be automatically uh, in your playing. You're just going to do it when you play. Um, and that's the way to absolutely learn this. So let's just, another example. So this is the uh, this is what I did, and uh, you know after a couple of weeks I could really do this. Like um, you know after waking up playing a lot of riffs and then going oh, why can't I play play them so they sound really like the pros playing them right? And then I, I, it just dawned on me I have to practice each individual skill of playing this riff and then you know just charge at it and you will absolutely learn to play uh, these riffs so they sound just right in no time.